what up everyone welcome back to the channel Jamal here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how you can generate extend reports in your cucumber framework I'm going to be using this awesome adapter it's called the cucumber adapter and it's going to be used by a particular team and it's the tech grasshopper team and they really really perfected this plugin in my eyes and I really want to say shout out to them so in today's video we're going to be looking at how we can generate our extend reports using our gherkin or our feature files and this is pretty much an example of what that extend report is going to look like we're going to have a nice dashboard it's going to capture our time logs how fast something ran and pretty much all the nice details that is very useful for presentations and demo so i'm just going to be showing you how you can get started with that so let's get started so the first thing you want to do is head over to your browser and type in tech grasshopper cucumber adapter and the very first link you should see is the cucumber jvm6 report generation using extend reports so click that link that should take you to the grasshoppers chirping page where we have a nice breakdown and documentation on how we can set this up so i'm going to be walking you through this process so you can get this adapter set up in your cucumber framework so let's get started all right let's get started so what i'm going to do real quick is just resize my windows so I have my grasshopper documentation to the left and then i'm going to have my eclipse to the right so I'm just going to open up my Gherkin test and project and I'm going to head down to my features folder and I'm going to open up my home feature. So we're just going to be picking up where we left off from our last video where we ran our scenario outline and it did these things here in the example. All right. So what I'm going to do real quick right now is simply open up my home page runner. I'm just going to retest this just to make sure everything is running fine and let's see what happens. All right. So I'm just going to rename this one as test one. I don't want to run all of them right now. So we're just going to run the scenario outline. It's looking good. And it's just simply clicking each category and it did that real nice. All right. So now today's video is talking about using the extend reports and how we can use this to generate better reports and what's not. So we're going to be using our poem dependency and we're going to need the extend reports version five. So I'm going to head over to Maven repository and I'm going to just search for advanced stack and then you should see extend reports. I'm going to be choosing 5.0.9, the latest version. And I'm just going to copy this into my poem file and my project. Right now that I have that copied, next we're going to head back over to the documentation. All right, so if you're version five, make sure you use this dependency. We also have another dependency for extend reports version four. So you're going to use the one below for that if you're using version four. I'm just going to copy this into my Maven repository as well. So now I have the extend reports Cucumber 6 adapter inserted. All right, next we're going to be talking about the plugin configuration. So the extend Cucumber 6 adapter plugin needs to be added to the Cucumber options. So that's what we have in our runner class. So this is the example that they have for us to set up the plugin. What I'm going to do is head over to my homepage runner. And what I'm going to do is just simply copy the code from com.advancedstack and just add it to my runner. All right. So what I'm going to do is simply add a comma so I can add another plugin. And I'm just going to add this right after the JSON. And that looks good. All right. Next, make sure you have the colon at the end. Yep, I do have my colon, else an exception will be thrown. All right, so now let's get the report activated. So the first method of activating the report generation is to create an extend properties, and we have to add this into our SRC test resources folder. So that's what we're about to do. All right, so I'm just going to go to my SRC test resources. And what I'm going to do is just right click, do new and go to other. And what we're going to create is a file and then click next. So this file, we're going to give it the name that it recommend extend.properties. Once you have that, just click finish. Okay. So now we have our file created. So we're just going to be adding these properties to that file. All right. So I'm just going to copy and paste that into my extend.properties. And this is just showing us where our file will be outputted. So test hyphen output spark reporter slash spark dot html we're going to change this up a bit i'm just going to give this a name like reports and instead of spark dot html i'm just going to give it automation test report all right that looks good next on our documentation what we're going to do is 
take a look at the Maven Showfire plugin. So if you're using the Maven Showfire plugin, I'm not gonna be using that right now. You can add it to your poem file as well. So that's just one other way of getting the report activated. And you can use the Maven command as well. So different options of activating your reporter. But I'm just gonna keep it to the property files for now. All right, the next we're gonna be working on the report settings. So this is like to change the theme, the title, encoding, etc. So we need to create another file and we're gonna give it a name of spa-config.xml. So let's head back onto our SRC resources. We'll go to new and then go to other. And what we're gonna do is back on the general, we can go to file and then we're gonna create this name and we're gonna do spark-config.xml. All right, now just click finish. Now we have our new file created. So what we need to do is add some XML in this file. So what we're gonna do is head back over to the extend reports main page. What you wanna do is click reporters, click V3 HTML and scroll down towards the bottom until you see the XML section. All right, so now we have the XML section. This is the XML configuration that we need to copy. Copy this and we're gonna paste this into our spa config XML file. All right, that looks good. So we have the report theme. So the standard is the white color. So I like to use the dark theme. That looks good. We keep the UTF the same, HTTPS the same. So the title of the document, so this is pretty much like what that name is, be even repository. We can change it up to our project name. So give it a name. In my case, I'm just going to say this is Shop Angola Plus. That's the project I'm working on. And then the report name. So this is pretty much what that report is going to be named. I'm just going to give it a name of automated tests. And then everything else should stay the same. Okay. Once you made those changes, just click save. All right. So now we're going to head back over to the tech grasshopper documentation. What we're going to do is just copy this, this property. And we're going to paste this into our extend.properties file. So now we are telling it the location of our spa config. And that looks good. All right, next we're gonna be looking at the report attachments. So to add attachments like screen images, two settings needs to be added to the extend properties. And the first one is gonna be the screenshot directory. And the other one is gonna be the screenshot.relative path. All right, so what we're gonna do is just simply scroll down. We're gonna copy this couple settings and we're gonna paste it in our file. All right. So now we have our screenshot directory. So it's saying, it's going to create a new folder and it's going to create it right here called test output. I have an example here already, but I'm going to delete it because this is going to be auto generated and I want to put the screenshots in its own folder. So I'm just going to add screenshots towards the end of this path. So now our screenshots going to go into our test output and screenshots folder. Looks good. And then the relative path is going to be screenshots. All right, now we're going to scroll down and now what we're going to see is this is what we just set up. So now what we're going to see is the PDF extend report. So this is a new feature. So if you want to generate some PDFs to show your um, highlights, your features, scenarios, steps, pass, fails, all that stuff in a PDF format, all you have to do is just add these settings. And what it's saying is, hey, you want to start the PDF. So we do want to generate PDFs. So that's why it's set to true. And we also have the location where we want to put these PDFs. So add a hyphen to this path. It had test space output, but it would just generate two folders and that's a little confusing. So make sure add a hyphen. So we have both our HTML and our PDF going into one test output folder. Seems like I have like two Spark outputs. <laughs> I have one on the top and then one right here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to take one of these out. I'm going to take this one out real quick. All right. So I'm just going to keep the top one and take the spaces out. And I'm just going to call this HTML reports. So now everything looks good. All right. All right. Next, we're going to head back over to customize report folder name. So it's good to add these two settings, base folder dot name equal reports and the base folder dot date time pattern. Let's add these to our extend properties. So what this is going to do is just generate um, a folder and it's going to call it test report and it's going to add a timestamp to it. And this is good. So when we reuse our tests, you don't override our last test. Okay. So it's going to make sure we have unique text every single time. 
and the next thing we're going to add is our spark report view order so this is going to tell us how our dashboard is going to look where the test categories and all that stuff is set up so just copy that and paste that into our file and last what we're going to be doing is our system info properties so this is just pretty much going to tell us the os version who ran it the project name just little quick settings okay so I'm just going to simply add these to my extend.properties file. So what I'm going to do is just copy this example, systeminfo.os. And the OS I'm using is a Mac. So I'm just going to change that to a Mac. I'm currently the engineer. So I'm just going to put my name as the engineer on this report. And you can just add any other settings that you like. I'm going to say the project name is Shop Angular Plus. So the browser that I'm testing on was a, is Google Chrome. You know, that looks good. And we also have parallel or multiple runner executions, but we're gonna be taking a look at that in another video. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just clear my console, click save on my extend properties. And I'm just gonna go to my runner and I'm just gonna click run as and run as a JUnit test. All right, so now our test pass, and if everything ran successfully, we should have a report. And we do not gonna have screenshots in this report. Those are just print statements. Yep, nothing is really happening. So I'm just gonna comment this out. We're gonna add the real screenshots after that. But what I'm gonna do is refresh, and now we can see our test report file is generated. We have test output, and within that, we have our HTML reports. And we have this nice dashboard with all of our results. We have the start time, end time. We have, you know, how much features pass, how much features failed. And we have our system environment variables. So everything just looks pretty much good. And if you take a look at the extend properties, you can see everything is matching up. So if I go into the spa config, you can see shop Angular plus um, document title. We have the automated test um, report name. And we have all these useful um, information in this widgets. All right, so we have our tags. So it reported that we have our add test tags. And it said we have four scenarios pass. We also have the system environment. So these are all the quick highlights I was mentioning earlier. We're going to dive into the test report. And now we're going to see the test scenario um, details. So we have the feature name listed right here to the left and to the top right. And also has a little detail of the user refers to the person interacting with the website. I really, really love that. And now we are taking a look at the scenario number three. So the user clicks each category on the home page. So now it's going to click the canvas, the lust on acrylic. So we should see all the given and when then statements being brought back in this little bubble. So what you're going to do is just click that. And now we can see our given and when then statements. In this example, we have the canvas print. So that looks good. Next, if we open up the other one, we have the luster and we have the acrylic. So this extend report captured those steps very, very nicely. And we also have, you know, this tag column. So you can tell you which tags were ran. It, it, even though we ran three tests, that's what we're saying for because I guess the scenario outline somehow counts as a test. Interesting. So what we're going to do next is in the after step, what we're going to do is add the screenshots to this now. And that should pretty much generate our reports as well as have our screenshots. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, let's take a look at the extend PDF before I forget. So inside of the PDF report, we have these nice details. We have all the feature names. We have a breakdown of all the scenarios as well. So a lot, a lot of details in here. Very good, useful information. You can see how long a test ran, which test ran the quickest. I really, really appreciate what the team has done over here, the Tech Grasshopper team. Really good adapter that these guys developed. So big shout out to, to the Tech Graphs Apple team. So what I'm going to do right now, inside of my after step, I have a take screenshot method. So what you want to do is make sure you import your scenario and then give it a name of scenario. And this is the IO Cucumber Java scenario. So make sure you have that. And what I'm going to do is just paste the scenario. And what we're going to do is do the attach. So we have a data, we have a byte, the media type, and we have a string. So in this example, we can see how it's supposed to look like. So we can see the media type is an image PNG. That's good. The name is just a string. You can give it anything you want. 
So now let's try to create a byte. This is going to be our data part of this attachment. So I'm going to just say is final byte, open up my square brackets, screenshot is equal to what I'm going to say is take screenshot. All right, so we have to do is just open up some parentheses here and this you're going to say take screenshot driver. And what we're going to select is get screenshot as, and then we got to choose the output type and the output type I'm going to be choosing is bytes. And now we're going to paste that screenshot element right into our function. And then I'm going to change the media type to image slash PNG and just give it a name. I'm just going to say image. You can give it anything that you want right now. And I'm just going to add my semicolon and now everything looks good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply run the first scenario just to make sure everything is running good. So in this scenario, the user is just going to click on the luster paper and select the silly peak print. Now I'm going to show you that it's going to generate another report without overriding our current report. And that's exactly why we're going to use the daytime pattern for. All right, so what I'm going to do is just simply click run as for this up. Let's see what happens. All right, since I ran the test, it ran both the scenarios. So you ran scenario one and scenario three. So that's pretty good. So let's take a look at the report now that we have two scenarios. So refresh the project. Now we're going to go to our last um, test reports. And now you can see our screenshot folder is listed with a lot of images. I'm just going to open up my HTML with Chrome. And now we can see we have four scenarios passed, 26 steps. Um, it's very funny when you click refresh on this page, the color changes. So you can see that from time to time. And now we have a breakdown of all our tests and steps. So once we go into our test section, what you're going to see is now we have our given when then statements. We have our images and that looks amazing. Wow. Really, really love how versatile this adapter is because look how streamlined and easy this is. I remember how hard it was just to build all of these um, stuff manually. Oh my goodness, this is a lifesaver. So shout out, shout out, shout out to that team. So this is how you can get started with the extend reports. All right, I think I'm just going to do one more test. And in this test, I'm just going to do a failure. So you want to see what happens when there's an actual failure. So I'm just going to change the, the home tab expectation. So the home tab is home. And I'm just going to change it to like home two, and just see what happens when we do that. <laughs> All right. So when this happens, this should automatically fail because we are not expecting two. We're supposed to expect just simply home, but this is a good example of how we're going to show what it looks like when a failure is reported. All right. So you can see our error on our console. We have our asserts failure. So the same way as expecting home, but it was home too. All right, perfect. So let's refresh our page, generate our new test report. I'm just going to open this with um, my system editor, which is Chrome. And now we can see the failure. So you have no scenarios pass, one scenario fail. We have our breakdown of which steps pass, which steps fail, and which steps were skipped. Very, very nice. We also have this new bug um, icon to the left. And it's going to show us which page was giving us this issue. And you can see a breakdown of that comparison failure right into the report. So it makes everything so much easier when you come to debugging. You can look at this and notice, hey, this is where the issues are current without even looking at the console. And a very, very versatile tool, especially using the Cucumber framework. You're definitely going to be needing something like this to, you know, make sure you present your reports to all your stakeholders, your managers, or whoever. This right here is the way to do it. All right, so there you have it. This is how you can get set up with this Cucumber adapter to generate great reports within your Cucumber framework. If you guys found this video helpful, please feel free to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see y'all in another video.